If you've been feeling overwhelmed with anxiety lately, try listening to a guided meditation on the Meditation for Anxiety podcast. Meditation is a proven natural way to help you calm down and dissolve stress so you can feel lighter and happier. So subscribe for free today to the Meditation for Anxiety podcast by searching for Meditation for Anxiety on your favorite podcast player. This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 2345. Basic Types of Exercise Everyone Needs to Know by Alexis Mallory with DIYactive.com. And I'm Dr. Neil, your very own personal narrator. Welcome to a Tuesday edition of Optimal Health Daily. This is one of just a few podcasts in the world where blogs are read to you. And on this show, you get the added bonus of hearing my commentary at the end. Oh, and another bonus, on Fridays, I answer your questions. Now, to check out our other shows, just search for Optimal Living Daily wherever you're hearing this. But for now, let's get to today's post and start optimizing your life. Basic Types of Exercise Everyone Needs to Know by Alexis Mallory with DIYactive.com Now more than ever, we need to cater to our physical and mental well-being. This is the time to stay active, rest adequately, practice self-care, and effectively nourish our bodies. With this being said, I'm writing this article to go over the basic types of exercise as well as give simple tips that improve one's overall health and wellness. Types of exercise. There are so many ways to exercise. Bar, CrossFit, yoga, swimming, aerial arts, Pilates, bodybuilding, and so on. However, if I had to whittle fitness down to three categories, I would say resistance training, body weight exercises, and cardio. Most types of exercise can fit into one of these categories. What is resistance training? Resistance training involves any type of movement that adds external tension or stress to the body using some type of resistance training equipment. Essentially, any exercise that's weighted in some fashion can be labeled a resistance exercise. Equipment for resistance training. Equipment examples would be barbells, weighted machines, dumbbells, bands, kettlebells, plates, ankle and wrist weights, and the list could go on and on. In short, any piece of equipment that safely and effectively loads the body during exercise can be used for resistance training. Everyone needs it. Many feel that they don't need to do any kind of resistance training or lifting. That just simply isn't true. Everyone needs it to some degree. I have worked with a lot of folks that have a fear of becoming bulky from lifting weights. However, the truth of the matter is you will probably not get bulky. Why do it? Resistance training is super important for posture, agility, and maintaining proper form. It also reduces the risk of injury by reducing the body's need to compensate and helps keep the body in great condition. Having adequate muscle tone can help one age gracefully as well. Furthermore, resistance training aids in weight loss and maintaining one's weight. For every pound of muscle you have or you gain, the body burns extra calories at rest. And so this creates kind of a fail-safe when we do indulge in cheat meals. However, having muscle is never an excuse to eat whatever you want. I recommend healthy diets no matter who you are, with an indulging cheat meal about once a week. Lastly, the lean muscle just looks good, which can help with one's self-esteem, self-image, and mental health. What are bodyweight exercises? Bodyweight exercise is any movement that uses your own body weight without other types of equipment. This could include TRX, which is one of my favorites, any type of mat work such as Pilates or yoga, and standing exercises such as squats and lunges. What are the benefits? Bodyweight exercises allow the individual to really focus on form as well as strengthen one's mind-body connection since someone doesn't have the added tension from weighted equipment when performing bodyweight movements. Types of cardio exercise. Cardio is anything that gets your heart rate up to a certain number, like on a heart rate monitor, and gets your endorphins going. It can be weighted, but doesn't have to be. Cardio usually involves the repetition of a similar movement for a certain amount of time. So here are a few types of cardio. Cycling, spinning, running, swimming, plyometrics, and hiking. 
Now, please note, this list isn't complete. I provided this list to give you a basic idea of cardio exercise. Why it's important. In short, doing regular cardio weekly keeps the heart, lungs, and skin healthy. It's also been shown to help with mood, optimism, and positivity due to the natural adrenaline and endorphin release this type of workout can provide. It's also great for weight loss and weight management. Fat burning zone. Earlier in the article, I mentioned that cardio helps elevate one's heart rate to a certain number. Now you may be wondering, what number am I referring to? I'm talking about that fat burning zone some fitness trackers refer to. While it's not a guarantee you'll burn fat when performing cardio in this zone, it's a nice target to have as far as your heart rate is concerned. To find this zone, let's call it ideal heart rate zone, use both of these formulas. Subtract your age from 220 and then multiply that number by 0.6. That gives you the first number of this heart rate range. Then again, subtract 220 from your age and multiply that by 0.7. That's the second number of the range. So now we have a target heart rate range when we're performing cardio. The talk test. A lot of fitness professionals still use the talk test to measure energy expenditure. Basically, if you're so out of breath that you can't talk for long periods of time while completing your cardio workout, then you're probably over the heart rate range we just talked about. But as long as your doctor says it's okay to work out at this level, you're probably okay. If you find that you consistently can't talk and have trouble catching your breath after cardio, it means you're working at an intensity that you're not used to. Again, this may not be a problem so long as you're approved to work out at this intensity. High intensity interval training circuits. It's also totally cool to combine resistance training, body weight exercises, and cardio moves into a safe and effective high intensity interval training workout. It really comes down to fitness level, your goals, and how you prefer to work out. Some might prefer separate workouts for different types of exercise, and that's totally okay. An example of a high intensity interval training circuit combining the three types of exercise, meaning cardio, resistance training, and body weight exercises, would be burpees, followed by deadlift to rows, then bird dogs, followed by squat to press, then ice skaters, and leg raises. Again, please only attempt these workouts if it's safe for you to do so. Set ranges, rep ranges, speed, weight, and intervals should be based on the individual performing the workout. Modification is always an option. Who needs what type of exercise? I'm a big believer in incorporating the previous three kinds of exercise weekly into my routine. Our minds and bodies are complex and need lots of different kinds of activity. The best way to live the healthiest life possible is to switch it up and not get caught up in doing the same kind of workout day in and day out. Know your body. Lastly, it's important to take a mental and physical inventory often to determine what type of fitness routine is going to work best for you. Perhaps keeping a daily wellness journal can help with this. This is an effective way to know more about yourself and what you can healthily handle. Remember, you are the expert on yourself. Fitness is all about balancing pushing yourself in a healthful way and refraining from something. Determine what's the best way you can show up for yourself in regard to your fitness goals and roll with that. You just listened to the post titled Basic Types of Exercise Everyone Needs to Know by Alexis Mallory with DIYactive.com. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. I was once asked, Dr. Neil, how do you work out? What types of exercises do you do? Well, it's hard to summarize it, but today's author, Alexis, did a pretty good job. As Alexis said, I like to incorporate a variety of training methods. Cardio, body weight training, resistance training with dumbbells, barbells, and kettlebells, and high-intensity interval training. And there's one other piece I like to add. Time for flexibility training. The American College of Sports Medicine recommends that we throw in some stretching exercises at least twice a week. And yes, yoga would count here. We want to try and stretch all of the big muscle groups like the legs, back, chest, shoulders, and even the neck area. When we stretch, we want to hold that position with tension for 20 to 30 seconds 
before letting go and relaxing. Yes, stretching is uncomfortable. It's supposed to feel slightly uncomfortable. That's how you know you're getting that proper stretch. If we can repeat each stretch at least twice, that would be ideal. So don't forget to incorporate some flexibility training at least twice a week too. All right, that'll do it for today. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for being a subscriber or follower of the show. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.